In the next few minutes, I want to share with us on a very important topic that the Lord has been laying in my heart for the past few days. And the topic is the best place to hide. Well, as I mentioned, the topic is possible that you may be wondering, how should we as Christians hide? Uh, I want to mention that hiding is not a wrong thing, it's not a bad thing. In fact, the Bible does talk about hiding or God being a, a hiding place. The, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and is hid from danger. And a number of other passages as well. However, <clears throat> it is not the hiding that is the problem, but rather where a person chooses to hide. In this world, we find that many people hide. They hide from danger. They hide in terms of when they are giving these uh, reasons for what they want to do. They may hide under false reasons. They may hide under reputations of other people. They may hide by using maybe processes and procedures in the society. So if a person is hiding, that hiding can, if it is uh, the right kind of hiding, it can protect the person from danger. It can make the person to avoid uh, trouble that is coming. In fact, the Bible talks about a passage where God says, come my people, enter into the chamber and hide for a little time from the trouble, the danger that is going to come upon the whole world. So God can hide people as well to protect them from danger, protect them from trouble, protect them from difficulties, protect them from embarrassment, protect them from shame and reproach. But there are times too, human beings choose to hide. And sometimes they may hide in ideas, in, uh, uh, in uh, under philosophies or behind views and opinions and things that are not proper hiding place. If there is trouble coming and a person decides to hide, and that then, uh, uh, hiding style that is using doesn't really protect that person from danger. The danger can still reach that person and can still destroy that person. And that reminds me of what we sometimes see in um, uh, videos uh, <clears throat> on the internet, et cetera, about uh, some different behaviors of different animals, particularly the ostrich. We are normally see that in the uh, desert, uh, dry lands or grassland where they are, when they, they see danger approaching, the ostrich runs away from the danger, he gets to a place and then digs the ground. When he digs the ground, he puts his head under the sand, but the whole body is still sticking out and this ostrich feels that because his head is buried under the sand and he doesn't see the danger that is coming, then he is safe from that danger. Unfortunately, if that danger was like a predator, like a lion, the predator will still get there and will still catch that ostrich and destroy because the hiding place wasn't the best hiding place. That's why today I want to share with us very briefly on the best place to hide. Now, some time ago, I was listening to a mighty man of God preaching. Uh, he's a worldwide preacher uh, and uh, well-known all over the world. And he was talking about an interview that he had uh, with one of the prominent uh, <clears throat> talk show hosts. Both of them are, are in America, both the talk show host and the, uh, this uh, minister of the, uh, of the gospel. And this was a show that was um, um, broadcast live. People were watching from all over the world. Imagine this big tele-evangelist appearing on that show. The person that led the show at the time wasn't a born again Christian. It was somebody that would want to attack and criticize and uh, put, uh, uh, find 
faults uh, in what people are doing. And he asked this evangelist many questions. And some of them were difficult questions. You know, like some of the difficult questions that they asked Jesus Christ, that if you answer this way, they will find fault with you. You answer that way, they will find fault with you. That was the kind of situation that this man of God was. And they were coming and asking questions. Uh, he was being asked questions on this, on that, on all those controversial things. At a point, the talk show host called this man by name, live. He said, stop hiding behind the Bible. I want to know what you think. I want to know your view. I want to know what your response is to these issues that I'm questioning you about. So stop hiding the, uh, behind the Bible. And this mighty man of God looked straight into the eyes of this talk show host and told that man, Mr. Man, the best place to hide is behind the Bible. And that was a powerful answer he gave, that the best place to hide is behind the Bible. There is no better place to hide than the Bible. In other words, when these tough questions come, when these things come here and then, and different people have different theories, different ideas that are circulating about that issues, they want to find out which school of thought do you belong to? Which of those ideas do you subscribe to? And this man decided to stay with what the Bible says. So whenever he was asked any of those questions, he will say, the Bible says this. They ask him the other one, he says, the Bible says this. They ask him another one, the Bible says this. And that is when this talk show person was frustrated. And he says, stop hiding under the Bible. I want to know what you think. I want to know what your opinion is. I want to know what your idea is concerning these matters. And thank God that God gave this man the wisdom to tell this talk show unbelieving uh, uh, man that the best place to hide is the Bible. There is no better place to hide than behind the Bible. Yes, in this life, we will come across many situations where we will need to defend ourselves, where we will need to justify ourselves, where we will need to find a reason for what we are doing, where we will need to find uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, um, something to use to justify our behavior, our action, our uh, everything. Now, if the reason you find for those things is not based on the word of God, your hiding place is not secure. It is not safe. It is exposed to danger and you can get into serious trouble as a result of it. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 17, it says, provide things honest in the sight of all men. In other words, if you are going to provide things honest in the sight of all men, it's got to be based on the word of God. It's got to be based on the real truth, the real truth from the heart, the real truth that uh, uh, is uh, uh, in sync with the word of God. Now, there are times people decide to hide in what is not completely the word of God. When we don't hide under the word of God, there is a temptation to maybe cook up some story, uh, come up with some lies, come up with uh, situations that are not really true and use that to cover up certain things. And for a Christian, that is a bad moment. Lies uh, like that only have a short lifespan. And at the end, it will stink. It will bring repercussions that will not be good. I want to just give us a few examples, illustrations from the Bible of such hiding in places that are not completely the word of God. Hiding under lies, hiding under deception, hiding under untruths. That means things that are not truthful. One example of that is in the book of Genesis chapter 37. 
from verse 31 to verse 35, the story is quite uh, common and familiar. That is the story of Joseph and his brethren. You know the story how Joseph was loved by the father, how Joseph had a coat of many colors, how Joseph um, dreams and shared the dreams with the brothers and the parents. And the brethren hated him because of those dreams. One day, the father called Joseph and said, take this provision, go to your brethren that are taking care of cattle in the field. Go and see how they are faring and give them this prov provision. As an obedient child, Joseph simply carried out the instruction of the father. He took, he, he took the food down to the brethren. And when the brethren saw him coming, they said, ah, that is that dreamer of dreams. We are going to catch him. We are going to kill him. And we are going to see what will become of those dreams that he has been having. Their plan was to prevent those dreams from coming to pass. So to cut this long story short, when Joseph arrived innocently, not knowing what was in the heart of the, the brethren. He loved the brethren. He came to provide for them. He came to help them. And what did they do? They caught him. They put him in a pit. Joseph was in agony. He pleaded, he cried, but they wouldn't listen to him. Their intention was to kill him in the, inside that pit. But eventually, they had one of them had what he thought was a brilliant idea. If we kill him, we don't gain anything. But if we take him and sell him into slavery, they take him to a foreign country, he will live and die there as a slave, will get some money out of it, will become rich, use that money to do uh, some things. So they uh, cut him out of the pit and sold him as a slave into uh, Egypt. And Egypt was far from Israel. And it wasn't like today you have mobile phone and all these social media you can use to connect with anybody everywhere. And as a slave, a slave, he would have lost his liberty to travel, liberty to do whatever he wants. He was only to serve the master then until he dies. But then these brethren wondered, how do we hide what we have done from our fathers? We don't want our father to know. And so they sat down. They devised a plot and they say, this is how we are going to hide it. They kill an animal, pour the blood of that animal on the, uh, the jacket, the coat that this person used to wear and took, send it to the father and told the father, look, we found these coats in the field. We want you to look and consider whether this is the coat of your son. Why were they doing that? They were looking for a reason, a cover-up, an excuse, an alibi to hide uh, what the, the real thing that they have done and their, their real motive for doing it. And they wanted the father to look at that evidence, false evidence that appeared to be real. They wanted the father to look at that evidence and draw a wrong conclusion. And things like that still take place today. Where people are presented with information, those information lead to speculative questions that results in wrong conclusion. And the people that have presented those information, they may be laughing and rejoicing. Yes, we have achieved our purpose. We've made him to reach a wrong conclusion. Therefore, what is actually in our mind will not be known, will not be discovered. That is exactly what happened in the case of Joseph. So in verse 37, we are 31, and they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, this have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it and said, it is my son's coat. An evil beast had devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. That's the conclusion they wanted the father to read, read. But was that the truth? No. They were covering and hiding under lies to protect their evil deeds. And Jacob rents his clothes 
and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him. You know, they were comforting. Oh, daddy, please don't cry. Don't do this. But they knew what they have done. They knew Joseph was not killed. They were just comforting and so on. There are times people try to speak nice words, and nice reasons and so on, but they are not genuine because they are covering something. But he refused to be comforted. And he said, for I will go down into the grave until my son mourning. Thus, his father wept for him. You know how the story ended. Eventually, these same brethren that didn't want to see the dream of Joseph being fulfilled, they stood before Joseph, they fell down to the ground, bowed to Joseph in the land of Egypt as Joseph became the prime minister in the land. And the Bible says at that point, Joseph remembered the dream. Has God given you a dream? Are people fighting to destroy it? Don't worry about it. Cling on to the dream God gave you. Cling on to the vision God gave you. God will bring it to pass eventually in Jesus' name. Another illustration is in the book of Joshua chapter 7 from verse 19 down to verse 26. The story here is when the children of Israel got to the promised land. The first place they were to conquer was Jericho. And before they fought against Jericho, God has instructed Joshua, and Joshua has instructed all the people. He says, Jericho is a cursed place. Don't take anything, destroy everything. And the Bible tells us when they got there, there was one man by name Achan who saw all those things and a wish of gold, lovely Babylonish garment, and he coveted after them. He wanted to pick them up. He picked, he actually picked them up. I mean, you could wonder sometimes when people steal or do something wrong, sometimes they don't reason. Lordly Babylonish garment, where are you going to wear it? What are you going to use it for in Israel? Wish of gold. What were you going to do with that wish of gold? The food you need, God has provided in the wilderness. The water you need, what are you going to buy with it? You see, people sometimes don't think, oh, they just say, this is opportunity to get rich, to get that and so on. Let's go ahead and, so, and, and do so. But when he did that, he was hiding the evidence. He took them, he would have wrapped them very well, maybe under the army uniform or under the uh, things they carried, the weapons and so on, brought them back to the camp. When he got to the camp, I don't want anybody to know what I've done. So what did he do? He entered his tent and dug the ground in the tent and buried the things there. Keep it. Let's hide it there. That was a hiding place. Remember, the topic for today is the best place to hide. What was Achan's best place to hide? It was hiding those things under the ground in within his tent, a place that would make it difficult for other people to know what he has done. But you know, lies has a short lifespan. At the end, it will stink. You know the story? They went to the next battle to fight against AI, and Israel was defeated. A small town like that. And Joshua was distressed. He fell down on the ground and, and prayed, Oh God, God, yes, Lord, if Israel gets defeated now, what shall we do? He was really in agony and he lay down there all day morning delivering. And God appeared to him. He said, Joshua, get up. Israel has committed a trespass and they've taken their costing, they've hidden them, and therefore, I'm not going to be with them. You see, you can hide in a place where the presence of God departs from you. And that type of hiding will not protect you, will not help you, will not make you better, will not make you uh, 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 good. It will not enrich you. So uh, God told uh, 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 Joshua that somebody has stolen things from the, the place that I said, Nothing should be taken. Everything should be destroyed. Every, that it was an accursed city. And it was for Joshua to find out who this person is. And Joshua uh, called all the people and they cast lots. It was like balloting. Uh, the 
tribe by tribe, family by family, eventually Achan was picked up. At that time, nobody knew what Achan has done. And so in verse 19, we are told, and Joshua said unto Achan, my son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment, and 200 shekels of silver, oh, uh, and a wage of gold. So it was both silver and gold. They got in money in that, uh, at that time. Then I coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran unto the tent. And behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua. Lies have a short lifespan and it will sting. This was the time that's life, that uh, lies began to sting, was exposed. Every lies will ultimately be exposed and it will not be good for the person that was lying. So in verse 24, and Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the camel and the wage of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tents and all that he had. And they brought them <clears throat> unto the valley of Echo. And Joshua said, why hast thou troubled us? The Lord tr shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anchor, wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Echo. So you notice there a hiding place that couldn't hide the things that he was trying to hide. The best place to hide is under the Bible. Another example is King Saul, the first king in Israel. And we find the story in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 13 to 26. Um, God told Samuel, the prophet, tell Saul, let him go and revenge the Amalekites concerning what they did to the children of Israel when they were coming out of the land of Egypt onto the promised land. And God was very clear, very specific, when you get there, kill everything. Don't spare anything, the animals and so on. There were some wars they fought and God allowed them to take the animals and so on, uh, gold and sulfur and bring to make use of them. But there are certain ones that God would give specific instruction. That is why you need to listen to God and follow the specific instruction for that moment. If you are not following the specific instruction for that moment, you may end up hiding in a, 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 a wrong place that will not protect you. So King Saul went, he killed everybody, but he spared Akab the king. And when he saw those plumpy animals, good looking animals, Saul decided, no, how can you just waste this? Just kill and destroy. Saul took many of them back to Israel because he wanted to become rich. And God spoke to Samuel and said, Samuel, Saul has not obeyed my commandment. And Samuel came to see Saul. We are told in verse 13, and Samuel came to Saul. And Saul said unto him, blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. He was hiding under, a law, uh, under uh, uh, his word. I have kept the commandment of the Lord that was lying. And Samuel said, what minute then this bleating of the sheep in mine ears and the lying of the oxen which I hear? If you've kept the commandment of the Lord, why are these sheep and oxen making noise in my presence? And Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekite. For the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen, look at the next slide, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. The rest have we utterly destroyed. He cooked up a lie. 
He covered up his disobedience with lies. Don't cover your disobedience with lies. If you find that you have disobeyed in something, simply repent and God will forgive you. But if you are trying to justify yourself to cover it with things that are not the real reason, you will end up in trouble. So he cooked up some lies here to cover up his disobedience. Then Samuel said unto Saul, stay. And I will tell thee what the Lord has said unto me this night. And he said unto him, say on. And Samuel said, when thou was little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners of uh, the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then, this, uh, thou not obey the voice of the Lord. But this fly upon the spoil and did evil in the sight of the Lord. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent. You see the argument, how strong it was, how the justifications and have brought after king of the Amalek and have all totally destroyed the Amalekite. Was the king of Amalek not part of the Amalekite that God told him to destroy? And he says, but the people took of the spoil, the sheep, the oxen. Well, if it was the people that took the pot, who was in charge of the people? Who was the king? Who was the ruler? If the people wanted to, I mean, the commandment was given to you as the king. You were supposed to command the people. If people wanted to take you, could have told them, no, the prophet told me, no, don't take anything. And you should have put, put a stop to it. You see, he was pushing the blame onto other people. Sometimes people hide by pushing the blame of their action upon other people. Yes, they, have, they took them uh, to sacrifice to the Lord thy God. It now become the God, the Lord thy God, God of Samuel, not the God of a uh, 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 son. And Samuel said, as the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. And so said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people. When you fear people and become a people pleaser, you will hide on the wrong thing. You will disobey God and you'll get into trouble as a result of it unless you repent. Now, therefore, verse 25, I pray thee, pardon my sin and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto God, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. You can be rejected if you are hiding in a wrong place, a safest place, and the best place to hide is under the word of God. I've given you those three examples. There are many other examples I could talk about, but can I tell you that all those type of uh, 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 hiding places is what the Bible described as refuge of lies. It's a hiding place, it's a refuge, but it's a refuge of lies. And the Bible has something it, it always does to such places. And it tells us in Isaiah 28, verse 17, judgment also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet and the hell, H-A-I-L, shall sweep away the refuge of lies and the water shall overflow the hiding place. So any hiding place that is not based on God, God will raise up judgment and God will cause it to be swept up, to be overflown uh, uh, and to be destroyed. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 21, verse eight, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, all liars, not some liars, not people that tell lies to protect other people, all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, in the lake which burned with fire and brimstone, which is the second day. In other words, heaven is not meant for people that are hiding in the wrong places. 
but only those that hide under the word of God. And when Jesus was speaking in Mark chapter 8, verse 36 and 37, he asked a pertinent question. He says, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? In other words, we people hide in all these places because of what they want to get, because of what they want to achieve, because of what they want to gain. And God is asking you this question. What will it profit you if you gain those things and get all those things you want to get, then you lose your soul in hell. You lose your soul. What will it profit you? What can you give in exchange for all those things? And we need to apply this to every area of life. Our, our behaviors, our actions, our decisions, our whatever we do, apply it. Whether at home, at the place of work, in the school for those studying, in the society, ask yourself, where are you hiding? What is your hiding place? And make sure that your hiding place is behind the word of God so you can be protected and preserved and lifted up. Now, lies, somebody said, that lies may travel faster via the lift. In other words, lies travel very fast. A strap is like somebody entering into a lift to get up to maybe a 13th floor building. The lift will go faster than somebody taking the steps. But it says the truth is walking on the steps. A person may take the lift, fly fast, say, yes, I've got it, I've achieved it, and so on. But a time comes that the truth that is climbing one step by time, step by step, will catch up, will expose that lie, and will flush that lie out of the way. That is why the Bible encourages us in the passage I read earlier on, Romans chapter 12, verse 17, the second part of it says, provide things honest in the sight of all men. Make sure that whatever you do, whatever you say, Whatever decision you take, whatever action you are taking, it is based on the truth of the word of God and that you are hiding under the word of God. The best place to hide is behind the Bible or under the Bible. That is the safest place to hide. That is the best place to hide. Do you know that Jesus Christ himself hid under the word of God, under the Bible? If you are going to live like Jesus Christ, and defeat the devil. And can I tell you, we are living in the very last days. And Satan is intensifying his attacks, his strategies, and so on. If you are going to overcome the attacks and the strategies of the devil, you've got to hide under the word of God and nothing but the word of God. In Matthew chapter 4, from verse 1 to 11, we are told a story here. <clears throat> that was when Jesus turned 30. He has just been baptized. He was going to start his ministry. And uh, after the baptism, we are told, then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards and hungry. In other words, he was hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. You know, Jesus could have said, devil, what are you talking about? Were you not there at the river Jordan when John baptized me? Didn't you hear God saying, this is my beloved son? Didn't you see heaven open and the Holy Spirit came and, uh, 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 and alighted on my head? What are you talking about? I am the son of God. You know, that could have been logical argument, presenting facts and evidence. But Jesus Christ knew you don't defeat the devil with logic with argument, with all those kind of things. You only defeat him with the word of God. Jesus decided to hide under the word of God. Verse 4, but he answered and said, it is written. That is it. Jesus hid under the word of God. He set example for me and you. I need to hide under the word of God in everything I do. Because if I don't hide under the word of God, I will fall flat to the tricks of the devil and to the traps that the devil is bringing against, uh, against us. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taken him up into the holy city 
and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest thou dash, uh, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. How was Jesus going to react to that? How was he going to respond to that? Again, in verse 7, we are told, Jesus said unto him, it is written. Jesus was hiding under the word of God. It is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taken him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship him. Then Jesus, uh, then said Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. Again, he quoted the word of God. Three temptations, three quoting of the scriptures. It is written, it is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Then the devil lifted him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. There is a season for attack. That season will be over. An angel will come and minister to you only if you hide under the word of God. If you take things into your hand and don't hide under the word of God, then you will miss the season of ministration of the angels because the devil will simply floor you. Today, I've just briefly talked about the best place to hide. It is behind the word of God. And I want you to go to talk to the Lord and say, God, this year, whatever I do, whatever action I take, whatever this decision I make, wherever I go, I want to hide under your word. Give me the grace. Give me the power. And give me the strength to hide under your word and your word only in Jesus' name. Let's talk to God now in prayers.